get us there? Huh? What? Shake. Shake. Oh, you are. Okay. Run away, run away. Hey, hi everybody. It's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch in Far West Texas, but you already know that. This is part, <clears throat> if I can get my voice to work, hello. This is part five. There we are, part five of the, um, of the bedroom wall build. Now, you might wonder why I'm not standing in front of the bedroom wall. Well, I had a little engineering that has to be done in this segment, part five. I think it's five, yeah, it's five. And then there'll be a part six to finish it up. And both of them, hopefully, will be a little bit shorter than the other the others. But what I'm standing in front of here is something that I'm going to eventually do a complete video on. A rocket stove thermal mass hot water heater. Now, it's very big compared to most of them that you see out there. And it's very big for a reason. And let me show you real quick just some of the guts of it. And then I'll explain why we're talking about it on the bedroom wall build. You know, the principle of a rocket stove is a rocket stove takes, takes in the fuel vertically, burns horizontally, comes um, the heat and the smoke all come up and hit, a, hit a, a, a top where they overflow and go down again, creating tremendous heat up top. Then your exhaust goes out the back at a low, a low height like this. The exhaust goes out the back and you're extracting as much heat as possible. Now, I built this thermal mass, but we don't need the thermal mass for heat. We don't need to extract that extra heat. What we need here is hot water. The reason we need hot water is buried in here, and I'm gonna go around and show you in a moment. Buried in here is a 600 gallon water tank. This tank is insulated. It's got about that much insulation. It's insulated, and then the beer bottles surround it, and I did a um, ferro-cement top that I'm not quite finished with. Now, inside, inside here is a gas hot water heater. I'll show you that as well. A gas hot water heater core, in other words, the iron core of it. Um, the heat, the heat goes up, the, uh, the, the smoke and the heat go up the center of it and around. Now this is what's inside your hot water heater, if you have a gas hot water heater. It's just a uh, cast iron tank like that. But because it's gas, oh, well, we have a complaining duck. Because it's gas, it has to, uh, it has to vent the, um, um, you know, the spent, uh, uh, the CO2 and the spent uh, um, gases. So the tank itself is hollow here. So your exhaust ideally comes up here from the propane that burns or the natural gas that burns. Your exhaust comes up and out. So that's why you would use a gas one as opposed to an electric one. It just heats faster. And that's what's in, that's what's in our hot water heater. The side of it, and that heats up the water in, in the jacket. Then the pump turns on and pumps the hot water out into the 600 gallon tank. In the back, it comes out, goes back in to the bottom, heats back up again, and eventually it'll get this tank up to, you know, 140, 150 degrees, maybe higher. It can't go much higher than 180 or the tank fails. Uh, so it's 160-ish is about where what my goal is. Get it up to about 160 in the daytime using a combination of the beer can solar hot water heater, which I'm ripping out and turning into a copper hot water heater. That will heat the water in the daytime. Then again, I start the fire here using scraps and garbage. Get that water good and hot. And then at night when we go to bed, stuff it with stuff like this, let it feed itself. And when it goes out, it goes out. I've still got 600 gallons of water to pump through the radiators. Let me show you a little bit more about the guts of it. And then I'll get onto the, um, onto the build of the wall. So of course I got this really cool thermometer here, and the reason I'm showing you the thermometer, it's a tr tree rice, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, the company, the manufacturer, was kind enough to send me this little, um, if you see the, the thicker uh, nut there, it requires that nut to go into the tank and sense the temperature and then transfer it to the thermometer. That didn't come with the thermometer, and I had six of these, these are actually antiques, and the company sent me six free of charge. 
Uh, so if you have an opportunity to do business with Tree Rice, do it because they were really helpful um, and they got behind what we're doing here. So, come around the back. This would be the thermal mass here. This will put out a tremendous amount of heat, but I don't need the heat that makes it here. The heat that we want is in the water tank. Chimney, I have to go up higher with the chimney. Here's the back side of the water tank. Now this part's not insulated as of yet. Back in there, Debbie's running water, you can hear my pump. Back in there is where the pump, um, the pump that pumps us is going to go. And that line that's capped has to run inside of the bottles that are going to veneer this wall all the way to the bathroom wall, I mean the bedroom wall off in the distance and that's why we're talking about this today. But there is one more component to this that I mentioned that uh, people are going to be curious about. And in my videos you've seen This antique radiator that's um, been laying on its side here for now about two years. It needs some work before it can be used, and uh, it, it, it's, they're very simple, So, it, 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 but it does need some work. I have to have a welder friend of mine work on it with me. Then I have to sandblast it, then I have to paint it. This is a 1913 um, American radiator, Rococo-style um, radiator and it's just perfect it's a hot water radiator it's not a steam radiator it's a hot water radiator so the hot water comes in one end it goes out the other and that cast iron radiates the heat out i have one of these and actually if anybody out there has uh, another one american standard rococo or american radiator rococo i'd love to have it I have just the one of these. Now I need a total of nine radiators in the house. I have this one and then I have six more and I'll show you those. I'm not going to take one of these out because um, it's again a separate video but these are made for a lower temperature hot water system like the one I'm building. They're made exactly for this and it's just that. It's like a little car radiator so you're going to put a fan behind it to blow the air across the uh, the fins and you're going to put the hot water in, hot water out and we'll get again. That'll be a completely separate video but I did want to give you the background uh, of what we're going to be doing uh, of what the component is so that you know what I'm going to be doing to the wall which here it comes okay here we are at the um, at the wall we're working on now there was a reason it's not finished um, any further than this because I've got these pipes here and these pipes are what the PEX has to go through to bring the main radiator line into this end to this zone the house will have two heating zones this is one zone so the main line comes from the tank to here the other main line is going to go through the roof and through the master bedroom but for this this is zone two so for zone two here it comes in it's going to go into the radiator, which will sit right back here behind the wall. Then underground to the bathroom and on through. So, I had to, um, I had to get the pipes and, um, that I needed and the fittings that I needed to be able to curve this thing around. So it'll go in behind the bottles. We are going to continue this wall outwards all the way down there and all the way up and the, this outer wall here will be veneered with um, uh, the little shorter beer bottles like Modelo and um, uh, God I can't think of the names of the beers right now but it'll be the short beer bottles not these long necks so what we're going to do in this episode or this installment is start on that because I have to run this wall out that way um, a bit so that I can bring it up here to the top to seal the bedroom. So here we're going to go and do that. I also have to take our window that's installed and get it secured with the masonry because right now an elephant could push it over. I don't know if anybody else could. The damn thing weighs about uh, 800 pounds. Uh, but we are going to get it secured in the masonry. So here we go. Now Although this looked like a fairly simple wall, there's a bit of engineering that has to go into it, mainly because a lot of the plumbing comes right through here, and I'll just run you through the plumbing real quick. Now what I've done is, through those pipes I showed you earlier, I've passed my three-quarter inch and my half inch red PVC, uh, red PEX 
tubing. Uh, and of course, red means hot, and that's exactly what it is. One goes from the two hot water tanks that are um, by the outdoor kitchen, are go and they're go it's going to go directly to the um, hot water tank uh, that's going to be in the garage. Yeah, there are going to be three hot water tanks. Again, a separate video to explain why. Then the three-quarter inch PEX line is for the um, uh, this zone of the heating system. Now, I haven't connected these all up yet. I will, I'll do that um uh, we actually do that as soon as I turn the camera off, but I wanted to show you what I've got. Then I have to make sure that these two pipes run as close to the wall as I can get them. And I'm going to be pouring concrete um, down about five inches thick right uh, to the... Um, well, for right now, we're going to stop about about where that red spool begins for for right now, because that's where I have to I have to have a base to put the bottles um, uh, up against the, um, the the wall of the building. Now, I also have right down here my gray water line. My gray water line comes from the washing, uh, the laundry room, and the outdoor kitchen makes a turn and then runs all the way out to the gray water tank. Uh, connecting to the gray water is the first flush from the rainwater harvesting system. And the first flush connects down there. Now I dug that out because that's a little sensitive uh, right there. And I want to pour concrete um, uh, all around that pipe. Now if I have a failure in the future, that means I'm going to have to dig a new line. But um, with no pressure going on it, it should be okay. And finally is that little plugged pipe you see right down there. That's a two-inch pipe, also a part of the rainwater harvesting system. The greenhouse is actually where the 20,000-gallon water cistern is going to be. But with 11,000 square feet of roof here, I can't have just one two-inch pipe carrying the water from this whole section of roof up here all the way back there what will happen is it will jam up get filled up and then it'll overwash so I'm going to have to leave this tank in place this tank the second tank we're going to move into the greenhouse and that's uh, and think of them as capacitors uh, that are only going to hold the excess for a, uh, a while in other words we get a big gully washer um, this this tank will be half full of water and the same thing with this tank in uh, it will be half full of water only with the fitting right about here that two inch fitting will come out and drop down make the curve and connect there now that line now runs the whole hundred feet hundred and some feet back to the um, back to the cistern and again this tank will be here and this tank will be back there half full of water but when we get a gully washer and it just comes pouring down this can actually fill up with 1500 gallons of water and the whole time that it's filling with that extra uh, 15 at least yeah extra 1500 gallons of water it'll also be pouring the water out of this two inch pipe down all the way back to the cistern this one here We'll be doing essentially the same thing, except instead of being uh, a fitting halfway up, the fitting will be on the bottom, and this tank will be most of the time empty. But it'll all, it'll be a capacitor because it's going to be taking 6,000 square feet of roof and absorbing the water. 6,000 square feet of roof, one inch rainfall, 3,000 gallons. That's a 3,000 gallon tank. Uh, so I think I've got that all covered. But that's the engineering that had to go into this just to get ready for the wall. So what we're going to get done now is I'm going to mix up some concrete and just fill that area right up back here with the concrete. Now that aluminum bent pipe that's sticking out of the wall, I'm going to straighten that up and that bent pipe is the um, is the f uh, combustion air intake for the uh, wood stove. Now that wood stove that we have is completely sealed so it brings a combustion air in from out here burns it and exhausts it and that leaves all the air in the building if it's heated the air in the building the hot air stays we don't take the hot air from the building run it into the fireplace so i have to preserve that and i've got fittings for that that i'll show you as we go along so on to the uh, mixing the concrete a little bit of time to get everything set up but i'm all ready now i've got my vapor barrier up which are the old feed bags that i recycle and i've got my concrete wall ties all in place Concrete wall ties tie into the um, 
into the uh, two by fours is what this wall is made out of. It should be more, but that was what I had when we uh, first moved. So the two by fours that hold the walls up, the studs, they screw in here. And the interesting thing is in this whole corner on the other side, it's all masonry, it's all rock all the way up. So they're also holding on the other side. So this wall, this corner is not going anywhere at all, period. So I've got my mortar mix all set up right, you can't see it, but it's right set up here. And I'm going to start with the tight space, because I hate working in tight spaces. Work my way up and just see where I can go today in a couple of uh, mixer loads of um, mortar. Because this stuff here took me quite a while to get up and get these um, ties in. So let's get going. Well, folks, there it is, at least the, uh, uh, well, actually, this is, this is like 10 lawyers at the bottom of the ocean, I guess. A really good start, but we've come up this far, started on this side. Uh, you can barely see where I'm starting the bottles going out that way, and the way I have to stagger them as I go up, this is um, seven bottles. Then six, five, four, three, two, one. Um, that's why I had to run that way so far. So as I run that way, it'll do the same thing and come up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and finish the wall all the way, almost all the way up, except right above the lintel here where I have to install the air conditioner. And that will be uh, number six, number six, and final um, installment of the be guest bedroom wall build. So, uh, Cascade and I, yeah, I called your name. Until next time, we will say to you, right, what are you gonna say? He doesn't know. I'll say it. This, this is Robert Earl from the Eco Ranch in far west Texas saying bye for now.